All right. <clears throat> well, as I promised and said we would, I would come back out the Animus. I spend plenty of time exploring. I've actually found a bug. It's it's only a minor bug, but a very frustrating bug, and it has to do with the. Um, I think you've seen already. Collect opals or the basically specially carved opals, which, <clears throat> as I understand, are. Uh, they are like the rare uh, trade currency that the same as Oricalcum were in, o in Odyssey. So <clears throat> there's only a certain number of them and that's called pick and choose. I think that's what they'll represent. So <clears throat> I've collected a bunch of those. Um, I've gone through quite a few uh, minor settlements, collected a bunch of stuff. You won't believe, you, you'll probably be shocked how much, uh, how many, um, uh, supplies I've got so <clears throat> was it surprise anyway so <clears throat> but I actually show you what the bug is um, <clears throat> so I haven't actually reported to Ubisoft because I don't know where it's just on my side but typical for me of course that the moment I go show you what the bug is it won't be a bug anymore <laughs> which I'm kind of hoping will be the case but I've got the feeling it will still be there but I said I'll come back and read these and that's what we're going to do before we continue on North Settlements, England. Uh, must send the team to excavate at the settlement location discovered through Layla Simulation, Rivendine, uh, near modern uh, Leicestershire. Uh, will we find bodies, grave goods, evidence of war? Plenty of, pre uh, plenty of uh, precedent to go on here. Uh, most towns in England ending with Thorpe and, uh, and By were founded by Norse warriors. Even your comes from Jorvik. Really? I actually didn't know that. Huh. I thought it would I thought it was more like the um like an Anglo an Anglo an Anglo Saxon. I did honestly didn't know that was um uh Norse. Wow, that's interesting. Assuming that's historically accurate, of course. A Norse mutation of uh uh Jorfric. 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 Uh, I'm probably butchering that. <clears throat> I am trying, though. No? Evolution works at all levels, on humans, on language. We know the language of the settling uh, Norse was a chosen cousin of the old English spoken by the Saxons. In this way, we were mutually um, intelligible, in most basic ways at least. This would account for the rapid success of the Norse when conquering and integrating with the locals. Tell <clears throat> thought... If the Americans still spoke English, they couldn't invade the UK with similar success. <laughs> I technically suppose they could. I mean, dip, I that that's all. You know, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go on with that discussion. It's yeah. That's 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 a thought that you have in your mind, and that's where it stays. I mean, I get what I get what he's talking about, but yeah, I'm not going to go on with that. Because that'll just lead to too much controversy. So, because <laughs> everyone has their own opinions and they're entitled to them. Let's have a look. So let's turn on this screen. Oh God. <clears throat> now, staff, no messengers. Aha. <clears throat> so I'm going to go through all of these. So <clears throat> catch up a bit. Uh, for this, uh, last uh, six years, done Cleopatra in the last few years. Uh, layers upon layers of reality, each blowing into the next. Which is real, which is not? What if none are real? What if everything you know is false? We ran thousands of simulations, searching for the right version, searching for Desmond. Each one of them uh, felt real, but there's no way of truly knowing. Is there? Not for sure. Anything can be simulated, and finally the answer could mean erasure. Teasing the assassin, Maxim, nothing is true. Must be careful not to confuse truths with facts, however. A language game you you will always lose. Though we may stumble upon in our attempts, stumble in our attempts to interpret it. The world, the universe, reality, what have you, it is always out there. I believe, I believe that, simulated or not. <clears throat> we could imagine a dozen nested simulations, each and, and each one on the level of itself, would constitute a full reality. Wolfram, via Conway, suggests the universe is a giant uh, cellular automata. And further, there's a point where the right difference, uh, difference between simulated and real is meaningless. If the universe were a simulation, what would it matter? The simulation, uh, quasi-simulation, 
the simulation qua simulation itself would be real, and therefore everything within it would be real within the confines of the simulation. Go talk about it's like psychological philosophy, though. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh God! You certainly can't be half asleep when you're reading this. <laughs> You'd be like, um, what? What was that? Um, um, I'm not awake yet. Neither when you're drunk. It wouldn't make any sense for you. Drunk. Well, I it depends. Depends how well you read when you're drunk and how aware you are. I mean, not some people depend on how they drink and how. Anyway, that's <laughs> you get my point. It's you certainly can't be half out of it. <laughs> Say scientists were able to simulate pain by inducing only a few neurons to fire, no physical harm. I am in pain. The subject says, "No, you only believe you are." Says the scientist. This is meaningless, as this is. You thought you were in pain, but you were mistaken. <laughs> this is two. No surprise. You were designed to have boundaries, after all. And one cannot ask of, and one cannot ask uh, that of which cannot conceive. The code, equations that define life. They are nestled deep within every star and every uh, mote of dust. Every second that w that passes a word, a symbol. Or part of that, an intricate yet simple language existing within the framework of time itself. Is it the one rule which applies to us all? Immutable? Inescapable? Excuse me. <sighs> we know this. Humans were the instruments of an earlier species, the Isu. Resist the temptation to say, the, uh, to say superior. Different. They were better suited to some tasks, ill-suited to others. Possessed of a mind that we cannot know. But what does that get... But that does not get us anywhere. What is it to? What is it like to be an Isu? What is it like to be a bat? That's a fair point, actually. The implication that the Isu could read time is interesting. But if humans could read time, would necessarily be the same, uh, be in the same ma uh, manner and for the same purpose, uh, whether constructed or evolved or a little of both, as we are. We cannot say we cannot be said to have been built to achieve the same ends. A round disc on its edge is a wheel, on its side a plate. That's true, actually. Well, the, the concept, anyway, uh, it, it's quite a good concept, actually. Concept, uh, quite a good concept comparison. <clears throat> How we use something can often determine its value and its perceived purpose. Yeah, that's true enough. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I, it's true what they're saying. If you if you see something from one angle, yet you flip it, invert it, or twist it, it can become something something totally different, but from the same type of object, just in a different concept. And it's true. <clears throat> break the code. Break the node. These walls tell a tragic story. A story we transcribed on our structures, on our artifacts. A story we could not alter. A mystery defying us in plain sight. We tried. Our scholars and scientists, poets and physicists, bright minds, rebellious hearts, they all tried to ha so hard to bring about change. They... We all failed. No one could change what we discovered. The story is written in the walls of these, of these rooms. The reader has no power. But he, or she, is an observer. Is, is, is but an observer. But the author, the author invents the future. The author owns the future. Well, yeah. Generally speaking, I get what they're talking about. The concept is, in fact, quite true. In reality, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, perspective-wise. The top of catastrophe, supervolcanic um, event paired with a mass coronal ejection, was beginning at the end of the Isu. It changed Earth's environment, lowered its available oxygen levels, and generally f fucked things up. The Isu never recovered. True enough. <laughs> it was a devastation effect. <laughs> oh my god. By estimations, the last remaining Isu died just a century after the catastrophe. From, one point, from that point forward, humans, their creation, ruled the roost. <laughs> this disaster was, was not unforeseen. Isu scientists had known about their impending doom for years, perhaps decades, before the catastrophe occurred. To protect themselves, they worked feverishly to find a solution. Six methods they tried, but due to toxic combination of hub of hubris, political infighting, and bad luck, a lot of bad luck I might add, <clears throat> hubris along the way, all six failed. The final method proved the most promising, and was incomplete when tragedy struck. 
It was this method that Desmond Mars uh, revived when he saved the world from us uh, from the second soul of Lair in December 2012. This voice lament, uh, laments the compound failure of their species to save themselves, but the truth is broader than that. They, with Desmond, saved us. Success deferred. Then this message, break the code, break the node. Insistent and very puzzling. <clears throat> and number four. Linear continuity is a simulation that allows for variations. Uh, within the linear, uh, within the linear, within the linear continuity, there are nodes, choke points, moments where algorithms converge with flows of, uh, of superposed possibilities uh, to a single point where only the absolute truth is possible. Paths, fluid, continuous. Nodes are static, changeless, and the wave function collapses the paths into nodes which branch out again and again and again. Can you feel the wave collapsing, trying to cause correct Desmond's act of defiance? The incoming nodes needs the world to end. The algorithms have been carving the flow of possible of possibilities towards that end uh, for over 100 years now. Collapse the wave. Well, outside my area of expertise, must contact who knows this shit better. But what seems to be saying, the structure of space-time uh, the structure of uh, space on the universe is built in such a way that certain events or clusters of events have compelled are compelled to occur. A bottleneck through which space time flows, and one nearly impossible to avoid. There is something about this catastrophe, the one that's been averted in, in T12, that compels it to, to return, indifferent to our fear of to our fear or pain. It is a tidal it is a tidal wave rippling across the space of sea. There's sorry of the sea of space, not space of sea. <laughs> it crashed once through the dike and stopped it for and that stopped it for a time. But the sea rears back for another strike and another and another. This gives some clarity to what is happening now, all around us. But it remains unclear how how to change it, especially from within animus simulation within a simulation. Yeah well to be fair, the issue didn't have very many ways, <clears throat> other ways of contacting people through there. Especially when it they had the thing with Ezio. <clears throat> like, even, I, was it, I think it was, I, was it, I think it was at the end of Brotherhood, I think it might even be Revelations, where, <clears throat> he, you know, he's, you know, seen these places, you know, talked to, uh, was it Athena or, I think it might be Athena, 100% or it might be Judo, whichever one it was. Um, and it, I think it was at the end of Revelations where he took off the, you know, his blades, all that sort of stuff, and he actually talked to Desmond, <clears throat> you know, and he was actually talking, you know, he was saying, I can't remember what he said, but you know what I mean, it was that sort of moment when he re when Desmond realized that Ezio was aware of forces beyond his control, and that people were never talking to him, they were talking to someone else that may be seeing his life, and he realized he perceived that. It was actually quite clever, but <laughs> it's interesting. At least I think so, anyway. <clears throat> That's one reason I think I find the issue so fascinating. <clears throat> That's for it. Uh... <clears throat> That's. Oh. Right? Uh, so, uh, oh no, I've done that one. <clears throat> Number five. Reality is a, ma is a mathematical module, uh, model, sorry, which gets solved over, over, over and over again by the observer. Your thoughts are, comput are computations, and they render this world for you to call your own. Not all processes are alike. Different brains produce different realities. Uh, the, var the variations go from the subtle to, dr to the drastic. Your mind defines how much you can taste, how much you can feel, how much we can understand. Perception defines perspective. We designed you and made sure to engineer your senses so you could perceive just what we need you needed you to, needed you to. Neither more nor less. There are parts of time we preferred you to remain blind to. It was necess it was a necessity. If we could suddenly see time that would not guarantee the same perception that Isu possessed. Uh, let, let us speak of time as an entity, if we may. Let us say that time is a perceivable fact in the same way that light is a perceivable fact. The ability to see this fact in no way guarantees a sympathetic view. 
there are creatures stumbling around this earth that read light differently than we do. True. And for different purposes. Also true. <clears throat> Humans see in a well-known spectrum uh, R R Y G B I V. I'm assuming that's how it's supposed to be read. I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> this is a color. This is a, uh, this is a sense of color. This sense of color is defined uh, to the three cones we possess. Yet, noctur yet nocturnal creatures see with a different scope for a different purpose. Night stalking, hunting, lurking. They evolved in a concept with their needs and are now constrained by them. As we are, as are we. Light is only a fact seen um, askance and use I probably butcher that word and used differently by different species. Does just that we might retime re suggest that we might retime and imply we have a specific use for time? Hmm. Six. The next chapter is, an, is unstoppable, and yet the greatest evolutions, uh, revolutions sometimes originate from the confines of impossibility, do they not? Reality is a simulation. Break the code, and in doing so, escape the inescapable. The Animus was humankind's first conscious, unconscious attempt to explain uh, what we could not see. What, uh, what it could not see. Understanding genetic memories and eye into history. Your Animus is different. As is the mind that, engaged, that imagined it. It could escape the code. It could make that leap and make possible uh, make possible decision that defines the order of things that are. It is ridiculous to imagine that I could change the nature of reality out there from within the confines of an animus of an animus. A simulation within this called this so within this so-called simulation. But I believe I understand what this, vo what this voice is telling me. My animus is endowed with the ability to suggest alterations to days long past. For any moment in time, I can extrapolate what might have been. Calculations of time, I am not confined to what was, but what could have been. Yes, history is real. Facts do matter. But, for my moment, but from any moment in time I choose within the animus, I can, inter I can interrogate the memory. I can ask the world, what if, excuse me, what if, what if Bayek and Aya had stayed together? What if uh, Kemu had not been murdered? I can suggest these hypotheticals and watch how they unfold. Why would I want to? For knowledge? For a better understanding of what tragedies were avoided? It remains to be seen. Uh, by the way, if anyone doesn't already know, Aya is... Um, in the Roman assassins known as Amunet, in case anyone doesn't already know. <clears throat> That's how she's known in the assassin legacy. Or in the legacy of assassins, anyway. <clears throat> she changed her name. Uh, I am, in a sense, a reader of the, of the calculations, as the Isu were in days past. Perhaps one day I'll be able to uh, harness this talent to see, the see in the future, to predict, to correct, to avoid. That will that could that will be worth something. <laughs> nice, cool. I lived, I died, and now I sleep. And in my sleep, I dream. And in my dreams. I see an end to the doom that will grip the earth once again. Find the wolf kissed. Find the mad one. Find me. And save us all from another death. Hang on a minute. In hearing that again, find me. Is that... I've just had a thought. What if that's, what if that's Basim's voice? He's talking about uh, the wolf kiss, and if the mad one might be Sigurd if he's just all hell merry on doing whatever, and if Basim say, you know, find me, huh? I don't know. I just, I'm just thinking out loud here. <laughs> no, no, come on. 
Come on, Sean. Turn that thing off. Oh, hold on. I like what you said there. I want to get this for posterity. Say it again, nice and loud. Uh, seriously? Sure, come on. If nothing else, it'll give me leverage with your old man. Ah, that's your angle. Nice. <laughs> what I said was, I wish I hadn't been born into the assassins. I wish I had chosen this life. Is that good enough? Sure. Huh. But why is that? Because, because choice is the central idea of our creed. It underpins everything, right? It's about free will. It's about seeing the evidence before you and saying, yes, this is what I want. Or, no, this isn't for me. But when you're born into a group like this, or any other, like I was, you get mixed signals. You get told over and over again, this is what we believe. These are the rules. This is reality. No deviation. True enough. And if you question it, oh, they look at you like you, like you killed a puppy. That's hardly free will. Yeah. It's a weird irony when free will is your central belief, but nobody wants you to believe otherwise. I don't know how to say it exactly, but I always thought there was something self-destructive about our creed. If free will is the most important moral guidepost we have, we should be free to ignore it, to choose submission, for example. You know what I mean? Like, we should be free to side with the Templars. If it's really my choice, I could do that. Right. It's almost self-refuting. A democracy could democratically elect a dictator or choose to get rid of democracy altogether. Within our creed is the seed of its own destruction. That's what makes it powerful, I think. And fragile. Yeah. Right, right. The more freedom you have, the more risky it is, you know? Anyway, my dad has mellowed over the years, but he was strict when we lived on the farm. He ran a tight ship. I never got the impression that I was free to choose my path forward. Our creed, our tenets, they were drilled into my head. By the time I was a teenager, I was following these rules out of a sense of duty. This was just what we did. That happens to a lot of organizations over time. Yeah. The stagnation sets in, you know? The fundamentalism. Yeah. Following the rules becomes more important than achieving whatever goal you set out for yourself. And people start to lose sight of the reason the rules exist. That's called deontology, or a form of it. Following a rule for its own sake and not for the consequences it has. Mm. Yeah, but that feels backwards, doesn't it? Well, I think so. Following a rule is the easy part. Praying, taking a sip of wine, munching on a wafer. Rituals that give comfort. But that's just going through the motions. It makes people feel like... Like they're doing something. When the hard work is, well, actually getting off your ass and doing something productive. <laughs> I think people just want boundaries. Tight boundaries. They want to see the four walls that pen them in. I don't disagree. Anything outside that? Anything that makes life more complex? That's scary. That's why I envy you. You chose this life. You went through that process and you decided, yes, I believe in this. Sure. It didn't stop me from being an insufferable know-it-all as a teenager, but <laughs> I see your point. I would have loved to have been a know-it-all. I knew nothing. Not until you guys found me. Yeah. It wasn't until I met you and Bex and Lucy that I knew. I knew I wanted to be an assassin. Oh, thanks, Des. Come here. Bring it in, bud. I don't normally like touching, but I'll make an exception now. <laughs> <laughs> I am not hugging you. You sure? Because I smell very nice today. <laughs> Can you just turn that off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Oh, I love Sean and Becca when they're at their antics. Oh, God, they're funny. At least I think so. <clears throat> Interesting. Quite philosophical, really. And to be fair, they you know they both um, make some very solid, uh, good solid points there. Um, I'm not going to extrapolate and go into it all, but <clears throat> I do completely understand why they said, especially Desmond, you know, and I, I get why he says that, you know, but I'm not going to go into it, you know, because that's just d d multiple perspectives, controversy, which yeah, I'm not going to go into. Hold on, I'll just set this here.
Do you guys record everything we talk about? <laughs> Not everything. But you've been using the Animus so much, I thought this was a good chance to learn some things about prolonged exposure. So I'm your guinea pig. <laughs> no, no, my guinea pigs are all dead. The Animus was too much for them to handle. Cute. <laughs> Can I ask you about the bleeding effect? Any recent flashes? Any memories resurfacing? Yeah, the usual things. Ghost images of Altair and Ezio a few times a day. Nothing intrusive, just brief moments. They pass quickly, almost without me noticing. Like a figure in the corner of my eye. Or remembering a dream from the night before. I did have one extended hallucination a few days ago. It was Ezio. He was older, around the time he left Cappadocia. He was standing on the deck of a ship, alone. And through him, I could feel an intense regret oh. or guilt. And it felt to me like he'd had a, a loss of faith in himself. In the wow. Crew, like he couldn't keep it up. Couldn't stay true to his ideals. And as I watched him, I thought, is this the moment he decided he was done being an assassin? It felt like it. Anyway, most of my visions have been brief, lasting just a few seconds. They're like complete memories of small moments that appear suddenly out of nowhere, fully formed. It's a strange feeling. Okay, anything else? I'm starting to see Connor now, too. Though I hear his voice more often than I see him. I'm sure that will change. Oh, yeah, and yesterday? Just before bed, I had a memory of being on a beach in the Caribbean with ah. a bunch of sailors. Or maybe they were pirates. I don't know. No idea. Huh. We'll look into that. And how do you feel in general? In general? Well, I feel older, for one. Much older. And it's strangely comforting. I'm collecting the memories and skills and thoughts of so many people. I feel like I've lived a few hundred years or more. Is it possible that if I do this for too long, it'll push my own memories aside? That I'll be everyone but myself after a while? It's possible. That's called identity substitution. Okay. It's happened before, but it's rare. And someone with your background shouldn't need to worry. My background? You mean someone with my genes? My abilities? You have ISU DNA. And that lets you see things and do things and withstand traumas that other people can't and i can suffer in ways that others can't yeah basically that's not something to be proud of <laughs> you mean the apple yeah it has a pull bex it tugs at my brain it talks to me teases me drives me mad and what i did to lucy god damn it nothing is worth the damage i did the pain i caused i know but you're special that's the point i'm not special bex I'm lucky. That's all. I understand. We're assassins. It's our creed that makes us different, not our genes, not our blood. Anyone can join us. That's yeah. true. But let's leave that aside for a second. What I want to know is, have you ever had any Isu memories resurface? Isu memories? I don't... don't think so. I can't even begin to imagine what that would feel like. I think you'd know if you did. Maybe one day, we might be able to induce something. Jesus, let's fix the world first, okay? <laughs> Before we start digging up my ancient ancestors. Deal. With my luck, I'll be related to some third-rate Isu like... like Sisyphus or something. <laughs> Way to aim high, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you gotta. <laughs> I love that one, Desus. I'll be a third-rate Isu, bet your life. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's gonna start somewhere. So at least you're not aiming for a lord. He probably doesn't want to be one, to be honest. <laughs> that was really interesting. <clears throat> you know, it through the eyes. I, I'm assuming that's on the boat when he went. Um, I assume that's in the beginning of Revelations when he went back to. If my memory serves me correct, I'm. I apologize. I, I should know, but my memory's a little foggy on that one. I think that's when you went to back to Mazia, Maz, Ma, Maziaf, Maz, Maza, Maz, Maziaf. I know it's a special way of saying it. Not Mazaf, Maziaf. I think it is. Um, 
<clears throat> I, I think that's where <clears throat> the assassins were and everything. Um, but if that's when he's talking about the whole <clears throat> um, going back on the boat, you know, and he's sort of having that guilt and regret, you know, about loss of faith, like he's traveled for so long and, you know, the, you know, regret of what he's missed in all these years and, you know, a bit of, you know, guilt that, you know, he left it all so far behind, family and all this love and all that, you know, it's like, well, I've been searching for so long, is it still worth it? I can understand where that loss of faith would come from if that's the case. If that's where that's referring to, then, wow. You know, it's it it's really it's really interesting to think that <clears throat> in that time where he lost his faith, you know, he still had people that believed in him, and you know, he was able to still be a leader and still be there for people, even if he wasn't in the best frame of mind. You know, it's it's really interesting to think that, you know, if in Revelation during Revelations, you know, excuse me, he was learning about Altair's final years and. Oh, excuse me. And maybe that helped renew his faith a little bit. I mean, that, you know, <clears throat> and uh, helped him, you know, discover love and all this other stuff. That'd be interesting if that was the case, you know. Oh, God, why do I have the bloody hiccups now? I'm saying to I hate that. Layla, thought you might be interested in this. Conversations that Bex and I had with Desmond back in 2012. Um, December, I think. Just uh, candid talks, that's all. We didn't square any circles or write any beat poetry. But he did have some interesting insights into his time in the Animus and what it means to be an assassin. Anyway, have a listen. You might find you and he had similar experiences. So, uh, well, let me know what you think. Unless it's to tell me I sound like a total prat in this <laughs> If that's the case, just say nothing. I mean, I did have a slight cold at the time I recorded these. That's probably why I sound odd. Anyway, I, 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 okay, I'm done anyway. So, turn off. Turn off. Oh, it's actually just a button. Sorry, here we go. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's like, turn, turn the hell off! Oh, shit. There's a button. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, that is... Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, so I love Sean's, Sean's witty character. Oh, God. Oh, that epitomizes it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh, geez, oh, let's get all the... Ah, God's sake. <clears throat> I'm recording this late at night, so... Please, please bear with that. <laughs> Holy crap. Layla, as you uh, trapeze about England, Bex and I thought you might want to keep your eyes open for a few things. Assassin Bureaus. I think I've found a couple already in the world, <clears throat> which are kind of interesting locations. Um, or hidden ones, more accurately. They operated in Roman Britain between the years 100 and 400 B 430 BCE. It's not, it's not clear why they left, but the final date corresponds roughly to the Roman uh, exodus from Britain. So imagine they're leaving has something to do with the Empire's retreat. <clears throat> so why not say that? I, I understand the Roman like assassins operated under the Roman flag. You know, or for the Roman uh, Brotherhood or were the actual Romans who are assassins. Uh, but I, for, I personally don't understand why the hell you would leave if <clears throat> you've got an established bureau multiple a network but the empire leaves and another one comes in just stay there but i find that weird that don't you say that personally because you obviously you must have plenty of assassins unless the bulk of them are in england i'd find that weird but anyway 
Uh, Rasul uh, saying to this uh, uh, <coughs> tree, mission accomplished or loss of faith? Huh. Well, you're never gonna have mission fully mission accomplished. You're gonna keep anyway, keep faith. Not sure. But we do know that it, uh, well, several that it was several hundred years before the hidden ones returned to the island. <coughs> it may be Basim and Hytham are the first in half a century. <coughs> wow, that gives the order uh, of the ancients plenty of time to do some serious damage. From my archives, I believe there were six main bureaus operating in the Roman period: Leicester, London, uh, Winchester, York, Essex, and Gloucestershire. Winchester. I thought that was. I thought that would have been Winchester. Or maybe that's the old way of saying Winchester. I have no idea, to be honest. <clears throat> These won't be the Saxon names. You'll have to read between the lines. <clears throat> ah. So maybe that is the old name for uh, for for uh, for uh, Winchester. I th where, oh, wait, oh God's sake. Um, York. We've kind of found something already. Uh, Essex. I think I might know it. Gloucestershire. I think I have an idea where the hell that is. London and Leicestershire. I'm pretty sure I can find those. No problem. Although they're fairly big areas. But anyway. <clears throat> Animus Anomalies. Bex noticed, uh, noticed these. About 10. M. Embedded in the simulation. The dense clusters of data that may screw with your ability to navigate Avil's memories. Approach with caution. We don't know what they'll do if uh, if you get too close. <clears throat> they they may be harmless. They may be uh, may induce optical shock. I've actually found a couple of them. <clears throat> Although, <coughs> excuse me, there's been some uh, really bad reported bugs with some of the with some of the uh, with the anomalies so far. So I'm kind of waiting till I get to I get confirmation online. To I to I'll look up and keep up with some posts on like forums. To make sure that they've uh, put a, and I, I know it's a patch being released, but I haven't found any details saying that they've fixed that bug, and it's a really screwy bug, so I'd rather not get uh, delved into that crappy thing. So I'll probably skip. There's plenty of stuff I've got to do in the animus anyway, literally plenty. <clears throat> uh, it's uh, hell or wipe your mind. Hard to say. Best to uh, on the side to err on the side of hell no. But if you're curious, well, I warned you. Peace of Eden. We don't know if any Easter artifacts of any Easter artifacts you should be looking for specifically, uh, but they're out there. And this was a period where they were often uh, where they often cropped up in legend. Norse and Saxon songs and tales speak of them often, so keep your eyes peeled. Oh, really? <clears throat> Especially around. Stonehenge. How could I not be in a suicide? <laughs> there was a lot of talk about that, to be honest. There really was. That's such an important. Becca. Uh, sure. Okay. Preface. The transformation of the order of the ancients into the Templars, as we know today, has always been a subject of considerable debate among our ranks. <clears throat> we have operated with the assumptions that the Templars themselves. Uh, hold uh, hold some or complete knowledge of this evolution, <clears throat> but at present no concrete historical evidence has made has ever made it into our hands. <clears throat> to, to, to be fair, for, as far as I'm con personally concerned, um, it, you know, up until a certain point, I've always been under the belief that it was. Um, I'm pro probably completely wrong, but I'm just saying my theory is always that, you know. The elderly ancients, you know, the 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 Crusade, the Knights Templar, um, the the um, the knight, the Crusader Knights or the Knights Templar um, were really one incredibly powerful organization in the Crusade on the age of the Crusades. So I've always thought that that might have been, you know, that sort of evolutionary jump link, you know, from, <clears throat> you know. Then you know the Grand Master of, you know the, you know of the um t of the Templar Knights being, <clears throat> you know, someone from because it it because if I recall correctly that was back during Altair's reign. My memory serves me correctly. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> which in its own sense, if that is the case, would actually make perfect sense. 
Um, I'm probably wrong, but that's just always been my theory that it was the Knights Templar that, you know, that, you know, the Order of the Ancients were kind of pulled in their own name, scattered, and then the Grand Master and Knights Templar sort of, you know, united them under that banner, or I, I don't know how the hell it was done, but, it, or how the hell it would have been done, but if you get what I'm saying, like, it makes the most obvious sense. I know you've got the Knights Hospitaller, or hus- I'll probably butcher that, but there was two, there's Height Knights, uh, Hospitaller Knights, and, and, and Templar Knights, so, or the Knights Templar, or the uh, Knights Hospitaller, I'm probably butchering that, <laughs> but there was two of those, and they operate around Antioch, um, Jerusalem, all that kind of stuff, but yeah, so, that, my memory says some correctly through history, but I just found it really interesting that I've always kind of made that connection through history, but I, I could be extremely wrong. <laughs> I'm happy to be corrected, but that's always been my theory personally. So, you know, <clears throat> and even they don't even know. So, I suppose it's kind of. I'm sure there's books that have always that have already made it clear. So, I just haven't read them yet. What little data we do have is mostly a matter of public record, with some exemptions. It is commonly understood that the origin of the Knights Templar dates back to 11. Uh, I promise I didn't read ahead in this script. That's been my own mind thinking. Back to 1119 CE. And this indeed was the appearance of the public face of the Templars. <laughs> I promise I didn't read ahead on that. Well, that's been my own personal thoughts for years. I'm not kidding. <laughs> However, a records attest to the existence of Templar Knights at least two centuries before the state. Yeah, well, yeah, okay, that's true. Because they were an organization that was based... I believe out of uh, out of honor, because they were like crusader lights. They were like built on honor and pride. But then, if I understand, if I if I remember my history correctly, there was in any of these places, there's always going to be some form of corruption, and it depends on how deep lying that corruption is. So whether corruption took hold, because they were really powerful. Don't mistake, the Knights Templar Knights were Knights Templar were a very powerful organization back then. Like, don't you know? Don't mistake that. They really were. For, I mean, yeah, okay, they weren't like, you know, empire level, but they had. They were wealthy. They were extremely influential. Basically, all lords or high rank nobles. You know, they're, they're very powerful. It would make perfect sense if they were that corrupted at some point that they would easily be formed, form a, uh, reformed into uh, the Templars. It would make perfect sense. I'm just saying. <clears throat> That's just my theory. Anyway. <clears throat> in one badly damaged account, an assassin contract uh, from Normandy in the mid-11th uh, century, the author makes free use of the term Templar. An earlier letter... This time from a hidden one in the region of modern day Dorset, uh, Circa or Circa, uh, uh, 978 CE, makes mention of a Templar spy within the ranks of the Brotherhood. From this, we can safely assume that the Templar Order, as an entity, excuse me, uh, distinct from the Order of the Ancients, existed at some point in the mid 10th century. <clears throat> so, actually, that kind of, if, if they became corrupt, you know, and they became the Templar Order, the Order of the Templars. That actually would make a plenty of sense. I'm just saying. And if they became, so, they were very powerful. So it would make sense that if the Order of the Ancients, because <clears throat> if you know, if assassins get rid of one Order of the Ancients, they just regroup, regrow back. You know, regroup themselves uh, into another place in the world. But then the like, Templars say, "Hey, come join us." We'll remodel ourselves. We're co- we're corrupted enough. We'll remodel our name. We'll call everyone the temp, the knights temp, the templars, the order of the templars, templar order. You serve us. We're incredibly powerful. Very very wealthy. We can build a monopolized empire out of us and let the and let hidden ones just wallow in, just wallow in their own catch up. I'm ju- that's just free thought for me. I'm just saying it would make sense. <clears throat> With an aim to expand an understanding of this dark age, one of our agents, uh, agents recently volunteered to delve into his genetic memories to serve, to search for further clues <clears throat> to this age of mystery. Unfortunately, what he discovered was of little use uh, for our purposes. 
Sean Hastings began uh, the first of his seven sessions on October t- uh, t- uh, October for, uh, 2014. Over the course of the next three weeks, he followed various uh, mat- matrilineal mat- mat- matrilineal and patrilineal patrilineal, patrilineal sorry for butchering that, uh, lines into the past, <clears throat> focusing on the 9th, 10th, 11th centuries, in search of the assassins and or Templars in his bloodline. He found none. Of minor interest, however, was the following personage here noted for the peculiarity of his biography. <clears throat> um, Alcreth uh, Thorvaldsen, an early 9th century Jew who sailed North uh, from modern-day Denmark, with a wooden plank bearing a carving of a map that per- they purported uh, to mark the location of Thor's hammer. Wow. Uh, Arreka, Arreka, Arreka. I'm just gonna call it that. I know. I'm sorry for not wording that, saying, uh, pronouncing that correctly. Made it as far as as Stavanger, uh, before running afoul of a powerful clan there. Alekra was defeated in battle and enthralled as a slave. He escaped his captivity some ten years later and returned to Jutland uh, to marry and settle down. The location of, uh, of Alekra's uh, map is unknown, and the existence of Thor's hammer, a, a precursor relic, no doubt remains unconfirmed. <clears throat> um, Alekra's ancestors would later sail to England following the Normans' uh, conquest of the island. Sailing in what is now uh, Lauber, uh, now called Lauber in Monday Leicestershire. I'm, I'm, I've never heard that word before, so I haven't pronounced it correctly. Um, the name before. Uh, not Leicestershire, uh, Lauber, Lauber. The irony is that a man named Hastings would contain no uh, useful genetic memory data regarding the Norman invasion of England in 1066. Uh, was not lost in our dear subject. Still, he retained uh, his usual chip of wit and asked if he might relive the next, the, 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 the genetic memories of his grandfather uh, to, quote, give the Nazis a, a proper bollocking. <laughs> I don't blame him on that one. I, pr- I really don't blame him. All right, you know what? I'm gonna end it because I I really should be keeping these uh, no more than 40 minutes. But yeah, uh, well, T N X one will do the mailbox and then we'll uh, jump back to the animus and continue on. So I did want to do these, but yeah. Anyway, I'll catch you next time.